all right guys back here with part two of the quadrajet and this is the assembly um, I've just left the choke pull off connector just make sure that this hose isn't cracked um, and so we've blown out this we've cleaned everything um, everything's in good shape ran it out with brake cleaner and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install this little screen and as mentioned i like to put a very small amount of aviation sealer on this thread over here and that just protects the threads in there and it's a little bit of a last you know a little bit of a backup for a fuel leak okay so as mentioned you've got the paper washer in there and you've got the little screen. Note that the open end is facing down into this nut. And that little spring back there pretty much just pushes this screen back against the nut to kind of keep the fuel from going on the outside of it. And be very careful not to cross thread these. You know what? This, this rubber tube is actually going to cause me to cross thread it. Let me get it out of the way. It's just hitting that nut. I normally don't take any of this off. It's not necessary. This is just a, uh, a choke pull off for the secondary doors. Stops them from opening. Okay, so there we have that. And let's just give it a good, good, nice crack down. You don't want to be too crazy. Make sure this isn't cracked or this uh, plastic housing, sometimes it's metal, isn't cracked. This is a kind of a flexible tube so you can just kind of bend it and get it over there. Just kind of pull it across there. This, these two little metal tangs, you have to kind of bend them open if you want to pull that out. But um, as long as this uh, at idle pulls back, it's, it's working. If this doesn't contract when the motor is idling, then this is got a leaking diaphragm and you need to replace it and um, this little port over here is a, a little threaded barb and that's for the uh, fuel pump overflow it's not currently connected but we will put that in later okay so we've got this one in now next up is the accelerator pump which is this little guy and a stainless steel check ball and that goes down that little hole right over there. I'm going to try and drop it in there. And I didn't get lucky. So I'm going to try again. And I didn't get lucky. Okay, I need to get some needle nose pliers, obviously. I wonder if it's uh, marginally magnetic. Well, it looks like it is. Now, how am I going to get it off there? Yeah man, let go. Okay, that's down the hole. I'm gonna drop this guy in. This has all been cleaned, as I've mentioned. I really need to get an even those pliers. you don't strip anything and don't go crazy tight all right now for the two jets as mentioned these are 70s i will have to look and see what the primary rods are i'll try and put it up on the description and obviously just make sure these have been cleaned and uh, you can use that same tool for that And once they seat down, just give it a little tight twist. Don't completely tighten these. They are not going to go anywhere. Just give them a little, a little crack on the wrist. All right. Um, next up, I'm actually just going to put this in. Uh, there's not much to it. Just make sure the gasket's in good shape. Um, this one doesn't look to be too bad. 
and it pretty much only one way it can go. What's going on here with my brain? It does have these little locating nubs. And then it's got these two little guys. I need to get a little bit of grease in there. I think I'll just be lazy and use some aviation sealer. This is non-hardening, so it's like the grease as well. Where is that other one? There it is. What's nice about the aviation is fuel isn't going to wash it out nearly as much as grease. So it does kind of tend to hang around a little bit better, but it doesn't work work for very large gaps it doesn't work under high heat or vacuum let's say about maybe you know 15 foot oh it'll work on a on a base gasket so these just get tightened nice and snug like so and that's the base there's really not much else to it um, okay so we've got the jets in and I don't think I'm going to be turning this thing much anymore. So this is the spring for the accelerator pump. Now I do like to put a very light bit of motor oil in there just so that when the pump goes down it's a little lubricated but you also don't necessarily have to. And there's a little recess down there it'll kind of hold on to the spring. Alright so now for the float height. First things first. Okay so we have the float and we have our little wire screw. And then we have this needle over here. Needle and everything is good. Okay, and this does not go through these holes. It just hooks through from the inside like so. So I like to hold it with my finger and then the flat wire goes through the float. And you can kind of just let it sit and hold that needle and just guide the needle in with the uh, the wire and to kind of make sure that the float goes down at the right height. Let me try this again. Get the needle in. There we go. That's looking better. Okay. And the way to check the float height is you have to kind of keep a finger on top of this wire when you press down because if you press down the wire will kind of lift up a little. So you have to kind of keep that depressed because the gasket's going to do that. So you can just keep one finger on top of the wire and then you can just take a screwdriver and just kind of lightly press on that until the floats at the top. And you know the spec on the top here I'd say it's about 10 millimeters or so that actually looks pretty good um, a little bit maybe on the high side but it should it should absolutely run pretty good with that right so after just being sure the float height is around a quarter inch which is six millimeters and you know let me uh, go and get a little technical here I'll just make a six millimeter mark on this and I'll come back so I have a sharpie mark that's just at six millimeters um, I'm pretty sure you could run it maybe at seven eight millimeters just to you know put a little more pressure on the needle over there and let's see where we've got I can kind of do this with one hand but it looks like the float level is kind of low so we will adjust this so carefully pull this up and how you adjust these quadra jets is you literally just bend see it has a little split over there and you can literally just bend it up ever so slightly let's see if we can get it to the six millimeter mark come on come on and that I'm 
gonna have to go off the casting here on the toe of the float and that seems to be within a millimeter so that's pretty good that's that's plenty good for me and so if I had to eyeball it I'd say the float is not level with the top it's going down at an angle like that slightly so let me show you what I mean I'm holding the needle down here and I'm just softly pressing down there and that's kind of the relationship of the float between the body so it's just off level a little bit lower on this side and that's good that's going to work fine okay now we get to the really interesting part that i think uh, most people struggle with is so the baffle just sits on top like so and this is the uh, primary piston spring and like i said this is calibrated to the vacuum of a marine engine which should be around 16 to 18 inches vacuum you will change that spring if you have a radical cam but usually for marine use that's not really gonna work okay now what you're gonna do here is as i mentioned earlier this housing needs to be a little staked because that bushing was very loose so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put a flat screwdriver on here and give it a little bit of a just a little wrap one might even just be enough like i said it just needs to hold on to this plastic bushing now for the magic what you're gonna have to do now is and this is important that spring down there needs to be it's going to pretty much sit in there like that there's a possibility when you have it in that housing that it's sitting on the side which is going to make it an incredibly tight spring so the re the trick to do it is to put the spring in this and then rotate the body up now the needles have to go in on the outside of the float tanks and you kind of work it in there until the spring Oh, I'm on the inside there. You see, that's wrong. That's right. So you kind of have to come back out. The spring is now fallen back in there. So I'm going to... And everything comes out. Right. You put this guy in last. Floats in. Baffle is in. And the spring is still in there. So, come on. So I'm just going to put the carburetor like so for the time being. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide these in with two hands. I'm trying to show you on the camera. But you kind of want to keep the spring in the housing and have the needles go on the outside of the float. Once it's a little springy like that, you can turn it back on. Okay. Now this is the part that's tricky. You're going to have to take these little guys and very carefully look for those jets down there. You're going to have to move them around and it's going to take you a while to get the hang of it. But they pretty much have to go straight down. When you get it right, you can kind of spring this up and down and it moves freely. Then you know that they're in the jets. Now you don't want to let go of this because you're going to lose you're going to lose the alignment of the rod. So what I'm going to do now is take a needle nose and I'm going to pretty much push this plastic bushing down into the hole and that little punch mark I made on the side there you can see now it's holding this orange bushing in place and that's exactly what you want. Perfect. Now this moves around a bit, that's normal. Okay. And what you want to make sure is also that the float isn't off to the side and wanting to maybe hang up on the sides here. It's got to have a gap on both sides of the float there and the body. That's also important. Okay, that's arguably <laughs> the most tricky part of all of this is just getting this little power piston in uh, like so. Take your time. Uh, 
And like I said, once you've got it in position, you can just push down with some needle nose pliers on both sides and just press that in. There you can see that's the little divot that I made of the flat screwdriver. That's just enough to pinch out and hold that in place. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the, this is the spring for the accelerator pump. I'm going to put it in there and now we're going to put the gasket back in. Okay, first thing you want to do is get your orientation right because it might look like it's the same but it's not. You'll see there's a big cutout over here for the choke arm that's going to stick up through there. Now bear in mind I was telling you about that little flap earlier. What you want to do is bend it inwards like so. It's a little flexible. I'll show you the bottom. I'm kind of like pushing it down. And you're going to feed that like that with it down. You're going to feed it over that rod assembly. And then you're going to pop it down on these two corners over there. Okay. Note how that's still spring loaded but it's being stopped by that pushing. Okay. This is almost complete. What we have to do now is get the choke arm in. Okay, now you'll see the one half of it has no notch on it. It's just a 90 degree bend that's cut off. That part is going to go down in here. And this choke lever down there, there's a little arm that comes up and down. And if you lift this arm up, see if you can see it in there. Whoops. See that little rusty thing that's moving in there? Right down there. You're going to put this in and you're going to rotate it and you're going to hook it in that hole. And you see now how it's, it's connected to what my thumb is pulling on. It's now in position. You see how it's moving this lever over here. That's correct. Okay. Now, this is the air horn. And as you did before is you're going to run this little tool and these little guys, you're going to run it through these holes and you're going to clean it out and make sure that there's no little crusties in there. You're going to blow it out with brake cleaner, all these four tubes, blow this out with the brake cleaner as well. Just make sure it's nice and clean. And once this is ready to go on, this is the trick now. Now that you can install this after you've put this on. It's just a little deeper, but the principle is the same. But I'm going to show you a way how you can get it in just from here. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to extend this out. You're going to keep it in this position. Now it, it is prone to falling out here. And what you're going to do is you're going to come in with this facing up like this. And you're just enough to get that through. And then you're going to rotate it back into position. And now what you have to do is you're going to have to line these holes up. These holes over there. You're going to have to line them up. You see how they're going in their little holes there? The best way to check is that the two in the center of the two centermost rods, those holes are open. And before you drop it down, you get your accelerator pump. You've got to get it through that little hole. Oh, I can't see very well. It's got its little hole it goes into over here. Come on. There it is. And you get that little nose in the spring. You kind of wiggle it in place. And the whole system is going to pretty much fall into place like that. And that's the hardest part of the quadrajet. Okay, now... Bear in mind there's going to be a very small amount of wiggle room here. So what I like to do first is get the two screws that go in right over there and put them in first. And that just kind of holds the whole body together. And that's these little guys. Okay, so we're going to just drop them in there. If you're doing this on the engine shouldn't drop them down there but if you do you can pick them up because the throttle blade will be closed so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna snug them down all the way and the reason for that is with any carburetor when you put your final screws in you have to get them all threaded before you tighten them 
Otherwise what's going to happen is if one of them is just slightly off center, you're going to push it up against the side of the threads and it's just not going to work very well. So we'll just start by doing these guys. You might have a little metal baffle over here. Uh, it does help, but it's not you know absolutely necessary. It should be alright just with these guys. We've got these two long ones. There is a torque sequence with us to this, but honestly, as long as you just don't go crazy on it, don't have to uh, worry about it too much. If any of these bind up, then you have to go back and loosen up some of the screws. But uh, for all intents and purposes, these feel like they're going in just fine. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is these air horns, they can be warped. So when you have it off, you could just take a flat edge across it and just make sure that it's not too bad. Um, so I'm just snugging these down, you know, just with a little bit of pressure. You just have to put very light clamping force on these. You really don't want to go crazy. I'm just kind of check these guys out. And I'm going to check these inside ones one last time because when you do tighten one set of screws you'll find that the rest will loosen up again there it is just just nice and snug not crazy and then there's one more at the back here okay we're almost done so the first thing I like to do is get this choke arm through here and you basically just pull it through there and then you'll have you know probably a little little clamp like this that'll snap through the top. It does have a little bit of a tendency of falling out that's why I do this first because that will now be in position. You have to make sure that it's it's stuck that it'll open and close your choke for you. Okay next thing up is we can do this right over here so you have to kind of work this guy in from the side here it's a little strange and then and that sits on the outside like so get this guy through and remember we had this little compressible lock washer like so there are some very detailed uh, instructions on how to set these up correctly I'll put a link to them but if all you're doing is just kind of cleaning this thing up and you know putting a kit in it then normally this is this is all you need to do pinch those legs there it is okay now we're gonna come around here to the accelerator jet so my arm is still in position, but if yours fell out, you could just put it back down in there. There's only one way it can go. And so you'll see there's two holes over here, and sometimes there's three. For boats, just put it on the one furthest to the outside, honestly. Otherwise, you could just end up running too rich. Now all you need to do is um, get that pin back in. And what you do is you take a flat, and I'm going to just put it in the back here and I'm going to start pressing that pin back out but you need to have this very well aligned in there otherwise it doesn't come through so what you can do is take a punch I'm pushing down on the accelerator pump because there's no way you'll get it in and I'm going to look for the hole that holds it in place so now the punch is holding that in place and then I can kind of like move it around and now I'm just prying this pin from the back in through and if you're lucky like me you'll get it in on the first time sometimes you have to just mess around with it you just press it in until you see it coming through there and that's your accelerator it's done see so when you accelerate it squeezes fuel down to accelerate your boat for you all right finally is the secondary rod hangers uh, I wouldn't worry about them too much. You, you preferably try and stay out of the secondaries if you're cruising, but if you're into high performance, 
you can go and look up some high performance rods but honestly uh, you don't want to go too rich on secondaries um, and there's many different combinations these rods also have a stamping these are D what are these D let's say DY DN DW DW rods and uh, they have pretty thick tips which means they're on the economy size but you'll usually get the most performance out of a lean to medium rod the rich secondary rods I'd say is just for drag racing so what you want to do is you've got the rods on the outsides going in like this and they're all going to drop down that hole there's only one way they can go you kind of wiggle them around until they slide down all the way down and then you just have this little nut that you screw back on here and do that by hand it is a torx but if you can get it in all the way usually just a little crack with some needle nose is all you'll need and as in my case I have this air cleaner at the right position or is it in this one it was the wrong hole okay so there it is that's for the air cleaner <sighs> and that pretty much wraps that up that's a quadrajet rebuilt for you put together uh, the spec here is I'd say anywhere from one and three quarter to three and a half turns what you want to do is get this on the boat get it as hot 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 as you can 175 degrees is good and you pretty much rotate one at, one at a time you'll just keep going in with it slowly until it starts to like stutter and run bad and then you'll pretty much back it out a quarter to a half turn and then you'll come to this side you'll slowly start turning this in until it starts running bad and then you just turn it back a quarter screw quarter of a turn now if it instantly starts running bad as you start going in then back it out until there's no change and then when there's no change then you start backing it back in again until the RPM starts going down and when that happens then you just go back a quarter turn and you're done and that's the idle mixture very important uh, and then you set your idle of course on this screw over here and you want it about 800 in neutral 850 so when you drop it in gear you go down to about 750 700 750 hot in gear is about a good idle speed all right guys thanks for watching and uh, safe boating out there also don't forget i need to put my fuel pump overflow barb in here it's very important on marine carburetors uh, that the fuel pump by there's a second diaphragm on marine fuel pumps and it usually goes into the float body so that the fuel doesn't spray into your boat so that's very important that you have that installed as well mine's just missing over here it's just a barb that sticks out and the tube from your pump just slips over that so thanks for watching guys and hopefully that'll help you guys do your own quadrajets